Hello everyone, I'm Dan, and as of the release of this video, I have already released Volumica. There will be a link in the description where you can check out the website, uh, but I'm not going to be talking about that today. Today I'm going to be talking about something a little bit more general that I think a lot more people will find helpful, and that is about how to price your own work. Now, I've long been an advocate for creators knowing what they're worth and getting paid what they're worth, so it might strike you as a little bit ironic that I don't actually know how to do that myself. That's right, I'm a poser. But seriously, everyone tells you that you should price your stuff appropriately for the amount of work that you put in, but nobody explains how you do that, nobody explains the process, nobody gives you any reference points, they're just like, if you put your price too low, they'll turn around to you and say, your prices are too low, you're basically selling yourself short. But everyone's scared of putting their prices too high because nobody wants to be like a price gouger. And so that's the dilemma that I face when pricing Volumica. And what made it worse was that Volumica is not actually that technically complicated in the final product. It has only a few hundred lines of scripting involved, and it's not even that complicated. It's mostly just some specific mathematical equations that need to be solved. All of the technical work was in the technique, in the research, and in some of the specially crafted textures and programs that I had to make during the course of development. So essentially, I had to price this thing not on the final product, but on the technical expertise that went into creating such a product, which is a very, very weird thing to think about if you're not used to it. But it does lead me quite nicely into my first tip for you, which is that you should change your mindset from the product early tunnel vision and expand your scope for what is included in value. So many people think that you should set your price based on what you're selling, and that is true. If you sold a chocolate bar for 100 euros, uh, you're insane. But also, it's not the whole story. Like, if you put a lot of research and development into creating the perfect sensation chocolate bar, one that was absolutely like nothing out there, and you put lots and lots and lots of hard work into it, lots of very specific chemical science and stuff, well, you can justify increasing the price then, because you've put a lot of effort into it. You've put lots of research, development, and labor time into it. And people don't realize this, but labor is really, really expensive. Like, go look at Glassdoor, look at people's salaries. That's what people are getting paid for their time and for their skills. If you are putting time and or skills into your product, then you deserve to factor that into the price. Don't sell yourself short just because you're not proud of what you've made. You should be paid for the time and the effort and the care that you have put into your products. And it's really hard to internalize that because we're also stuck in this mentality of, you know, trying to evaluate objective value based on what's there while kind of forgetting the human element of things, the labor element of things. Labor has almost been commoditized and not worth talking about which is wrong, and that's not how it should be at all, because labor is really, really important, and you are worth the time that you put into your projects. So that's the first thing, and I'm sorry if it sounded a little bit preachy, but seriously, you should really try and internalize that, because that mindset change alone will probably help a lot of you to find better value in your products. But also secondly, and this might not be applicable to everyone, but you should look for examples of what other people are doing. And you should importantly look at the professional stuff. Look at the stuff that professionals are doing. I've seen a fair few people sell themselves short because they're looking at places like Fiverr where there's like some 16 year old teenager doing work really cheaply and they're just like, oh, I need to match that price. But don't, like you're worth more than the minimum price for something. You're worth more than some kid on Fiverr who's doing something mediocrely for a ridiculously low price that they probably don't even know is too low. So in the process of pricing Volumica, what I actually did was I went to the Unity Asset Store and I looked up volumetric fog implementations to try and see what the general price range was for actual volumetric fog solutions in other engines. And generally, I found that most of them lie within the 40 to 70 euro range, most of them landing around the 50 euro mark. 
Now, I knew that 70 euros would be a little bit of a stretch for what I've made, even considering all the research and development costs, but I thought 50 euros is actually quite reasonable for what I've made. Now, something that I do want to talk about here, and this isn't really general, it's more about Volumica, but it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison to compare Volumica to actual volumetric fog implementations because they kind of have different internals. Volumetric fog implementations in Unity often write their own shader code, they have their own like processing pipelines and stuff. Generally, they're working at a much lower level than I am, which means that it's tempting to think that Volumica is worthless. But remember what I said about valuing the labor and valuing the input as well as the product? Well, it turns out that Volumica is still at the same sort of level of technical complexity, because what Volumica does is that it manipulates Roblox's own rendering pipeline and Roblox's own shaders, and it bends them to do the work that we want to do, because we don't have user programmable shaders. And doing that, it turns out, is quite technically challenging. You have to have a sort of deep and really intricate detailed knowledge of how Roblox's rendering pipeline works, about how graphics cards process things, about what things are fast to render, what things are slow to render, how things scale, how things blend, how things are composited into a final image. And even at one point while I was debugging some dithering stuff trying to figure out where I was losing precision in the compositing step, I did open up RenderDoc and start decompiling shader code with the help of Mr. Chicken Rocket, who seems to be an expert on everything. But yeah, I was applying some proper computer graphics knowledge to this problem, and I was working at a technical level not unheard of in these other implementations. And so what I came to realize was that that's worth something. And that's not something that anyone else is ever going to really see unless I explain it all in a blog post. But that's worth something, and I shouldn't discount that. And it's so tempting to discount that. Mainly the reason why I'm sharing this is there's still two main reasons. The first one is that I'm trying to convince myself that it makes sense, and well, the easiest way to convince myself is to have someone else tell me that it makes sense. So uh, here you go. Uh, but also secondly is that maybe some of you guys are having these thoughts as well. Maybe this will help you sort things out in your head. I'm thinking aloud so that if you're thinking the same things, maybe it might resonate with you. I think that there are lots of temptations to lower your price, there's lots of this sort of weight to try and get the optimum price for maximum sales and maximum reach, but in a way that kind of devalues yourself, which I think that's not healthy. Anyway, I think I want to end this video by asking you guys a question, and that is, what resources are out there to help people price their own work? Because I genuinely don't know of many, or really, there's none that I can name off the top of my head even. I think it would be really useful if there were more resources out there talking about the worth of work and really giving people some advice on what they should actually do in these situations. I mean, I've looked high and low for advice and I've found not that much that I actually found useful. So I'd be really interested to know if you guys have any advice and if you guys have any sources of advice. That would be quite useful, not just to me, but also to a lot of the people watching this video right now who might be struggling with the same thing. So please do leave a comment below if you have any suggestions. Anyway, I've been Dan. This has been a relatively quick video. Go grab the Lumica at the link in the description and I will see you guys very, very soon. Have fun.